Let's start taking that ladder rack off. I moved the car out of here. So what we need to do is we need to move that ladder rack. We're gonna unbolt it, bring it down here. Then we're gonna start cutting it up. So let me show you a problem that I have actually unbolting this. So here's the ladder rack, as you can see. The bolts go to nuts on the bottom side of this. Well, I can't get this thing open. And it's all bent up right here. I did not do that. You can see that the bend marks are pretty rusted. When I bought the truck, it was like that. I spent about the last 15 minutes trying to pry that thing open. I can get it, but I wanna get this thing removed before it gets too late. So let's go ahead and start rocking that out. Let's start getting this thing unbolted. We'll lower it down, start chopping it up. side done let's go ahead and unbolt the rest of them guys knock this thing out because that new welding car ain't gonna build itself let me show you so you can see the nuts underneath that there's two of them so i think it's one two three we'll just lift this whole thing off slide it drop it down to the ground start chopping it up everything dropping because the floor is rotted out on this. Oh yeah, easy. If anybody has a GMC grill for a C10 or C20 in my generation, reach out to me. I want a GMC grill really bad. So a friend of mine's gonna come grab these two things because I don't want these anymore. Once those are gone, that'll free up all of that space. Those boxes need to go up in a loft. I can move that over there. That's trash, that's good. Move that over there. I don't know if I want my degreaser or solvent tank yet. If this makes sense, I don't know if this is gonna make sense. I want this corner to be part of the base that that cabinet can rest on. So I have the cabinet corner right here. So imagine this corner right here underneath a corner there. But I might use those corner pieces as the corners for it to lower on. So I think for now, I might just chop it in the center. Boom, boom. From center to the end is still wider than the cabinet. So no matter what, I won't be wasting material. I won't undercut it or overcut it. So if I end up going with a different design, I'm not gonna screw myself over. So let's go ahead and cut it in the center and we'll kind of get this thing out of the way here. 66 inches. So 33 is center. I highly recommend not going guardless on your cutoff wheel. It definitely looks smaller without the ladder rack on it, that's for sure. What's up, man? Come on in. Now that we got these pieces cut in half, so what we should do is go grab that two drawer filing cabinet and I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean about those cross sections being a brace. I highly recommend if you're gonna make your own welding cart out of something like this, get the drawers that lock. Because if you don't, every time you move it, those drawers will slide open. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut off all the access metal that we don't need just to eliminate a bunch of stuff. And then we're gonna start actually cutting it down, measuring, cutting, measuring, cutting. I looked at it for about three minutes and I kind of got an idea of what I want to do. Let me show you. So since that corner is going to be there, this corner is going to be the base there. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the difference out of the center. I'll just do that. I want to keep it simple. I don't want to overcomplicate it. So that's what I'll do. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's measure the cabinet. Then we'll measure that. Then we'll get our distance. The cabinet is depth wise 26 and a half. 
So let's go ahead and cut it. Let's do 13 and a half from one side, 13 and a half from the other side, and then we'll call it. Then at that point, we'll do a test fit. What I did was I cut it in half so I could actually move it over here and use my vise to cut it. Go grab my pencil. Okay. Well, I wanted to go look for my pencil. And it's right here. I got a different one. Go 13 and a half and mark it. sits there. This is one side base. Oh yeah, that'll work. I got plenty of gap back here, so that gap will close up. So let's go ahead and find center on here, and we'll cut it. We're going to call it 15 and a half. I want to make it 15 and a half because I want to have a half inch of light, like this side. So what is that? Seven seven and three quarter. Double check my measurement. Doesn't have to be perfect, as long as it's close. Let's cut this off while we're there. I'm gonna leave this on here. I'll probably end up cutting it like over here somewhere because I want this to be the back part that overhangs because I'm gonna put the welding tank right here. So the cabinet will be sitting here facing you. Welding tank will sit right there, if that makes sense. Let me cut this part off first, the overhang for the welding tank. I want this out of the way. Then we'll focus on cutting this off and this off. So let me bring you around. Save all the scrap metal you can, guys. This ladder rack is probably, if it was new metal, probably close to 200 bucks, if not a little more. Keep the stuff you have, trust me. Gotta do the exact same thing on that side as we did on this side. Let's start knocking it out. I'm gonna put you on a time lapse. Let's get into it. set on here. I'm going to brace it, make sure everything is square and true, and just hack it together. Just set it down. Oh, that's actually like perfect. There's the back of it. As you can see, it's not perfectly square, but we will make it square. Here's the side of it. There's the front. There's the back. We have those angle pieces in each corner to keep it there. These originally was for the swinging ladder rack. And I was gonna remove them, but I think I might keep them because it'll keep this thing stable and keep it from sliding forward. I like it. Let's just go ahead and do a quick tax on it. We're not gonna fully weld it. We're just gonna tack it because in case I need to break those tacks off, it's easy. So let's go ahead and get that done. Okay, so I got a piece of metal here holding it straight. Let's go ahead and get that tacked together. Okay, turn the machine on. Turn my breaker on for my 220. 
Always make sure you get a nice clean ground. I did already clean up the edges on that, so that should be a pretty solid ground. I don't want to go too deep in my material for a tack weld, so I have a set on a 14 gauge. That should get us at least pretty close to where I want it. I had to make my tacks a little bigger because I had to jump a gap, but that should be pretty good. Yeah. Twenty-seven even. Twenty-seven even. Fifteen and a half. Fifteen and a half. I'm gonna call that square enough, guys. We're not looking for perfection. Just nice, easy tax. When it comes to welding fabrication, this is a welding car. It doesn't need to be perfect. When we do the sheet metal on the cars, we're gonna absolutely get that as close as we can to perfect. But still take your time, guys. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put this back on here, make sure the base is good. Once we know the base is good, then we're just gonna tack another side because right now we only got the tops tacked. So when we start building it, it doesn't really move around on us too much. We wanna have some triangulation so it can have some stabilization. Stabilization? Stabilization. And I'm using the term fabrication loosely here, guys. This is not fabrication. This is cutting the welding with a quarter inch of play, right? Let's be honest here. We're not, we're not making it like within a quarter thousandths or a thousandths or one tenth of a thousandths. That is absolutely perfect. It's not too tight in there. That's the beginning of the welding cart. Got some drawers. I can throw my gloves and helmet in one. Extra tips, all that good stuff for this. I don't know, the sky's the limit, but it's way better than what this thing is. This is a super cheap one. But I highly recommend, guys, if you got a couple extra bucks to spare, get the Power MiG 211 or the Power MiG 250. Both of those are great machines for the money. I mean, you really can't beat that kind of price. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish tacking this baby together. This should be pretty darn stable now. Now what we could do, let me, let me show you what I'm gonna do for the bottom here. I went to everyone's favorite cheap tool store. And there, and right here. Since we got the metal tank going on the back of this, I might put it at the very end, just so it has the most stability as possible. That's probably what I end up doing. I'll probably just end up tapping it on there. Yeah, you probably should attack the casters on there in case something happens to them. But guys, you know what? I really don't care that much. Um, not really that important to me. This is pretty much a free welding cart. I'm not really financially tied to this, right? But what we'll do is we'll actually shim this one because I want the front end a little taller than the back end because of what I said earlier. When your welding cart is facing towards the front of the house, a lot of times people who do this kind of stuff, they don't get the locking drawers and those drawers end up just kind of keep opening on them, kind of like a tool chest. And that is super annoying, I don't want that. But I think it's a great start tonight, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and call it for the night. We got a lot more accomplished than I thought we would. Now that we got the base done, what I wanna do is cut the mounts for the casters. Remember, like I said, I want the front a little bit higher than the rear. When it gets too late, I don't wanna cut too late out here, so what I'm gonna do is cut those now, so when it does get late, I actually have something more I can do. So let's go ahead and cut those real quick, and then keep rocking and rolling. So what we're gonna do, what we're gonna do real fast is cut these out. What I wanna do is, you'll see later what I'm doing. We'll do one there, leave a little bit of a gap. Another one there. So these will be for a two front. So yeah, one, two, three, four cuts on that for the front. Two, three. Okay, I got enough material on this one for the rears. I got enough material for this one on the front. Let's go ahead and get a bunch of these cut and a bunch of these cut for the mounts for this.
two, four, six, eight. Now we need to figure out the height of the cabinet and start making our pillars on each side, our corner uh, supports for it. So let's go ahead and put that cabinet on the base and then start measuring. Lay the base on the ground. So let's measure this distance from here to the top and then we'll just add an inch from there. Is 29, so we'll make it 30. I just want to get a majority of the cutting done before it gets too late out here in the shop. I don't want to bother my neighbors or anybody else. So I just want to knock this out as fast as possible. Let's see, one, two. Let's cut these two and then I got a bigger one to cut. Okay, sorry about that. I actually just re-measured it. We're gonna go 30 and a quarter inches. You will see why. I got backwards in my head and I'm glad I caught it before it was too late. Let's go 30 and one quarter. Thirty and one quarter. One done. Three to go. It's close. Two. Well, let's clean up the ends on this. Flapper this these because we're gonna have to weld on this some. Now let's go ahead real fast. Let's clean up each corner so we actually have some decent material to weld on. doing it back here is a good idea so when the welding tank is up against it it's not pushing up against here or the welder well while i have time why don't i clean up the uh, mounting surfaces for the casters Measure the other one. I'm gonna go eight inches from here. That's probably where I'm gonna cut it eventually. I wanna make sure it's perfect before I cut it. So then we'll put the casters right here. Maybe even off to the side, I don't know yet. More of the same guys, nothing really exciting. I've just been filing on these, just trying to get them cleaned up as much as possible. So when I do weld them, it actually has a good, uh, it's actually got good contact. That's good enough for me. I'm not looking for perfect, I'm looking for good. Dusty there, aren't you? Too bad these aren't bars of gold. Oh, I think I breathed in every 1970s disease there is. Whew. Dusty. Dusty, dusty, dusty. Let's start tacking the upper pieces in place. Nicholas with N Motive should be stopping over here any minute. Sorry. But look how messy this is. I don't know if 
that's not good anymore. If you can, real quick, guys, hit that subscribe button. I would appreciate it. I can see some momentum on this channel. I want to keep that momentum going, so please hit that subscribe button if you can. That truly does mean the world to me when you guys hit that button. So if you guys could, keep clicking that. Nicholas! I'll be back. I don't know if I want to open it. Okay, give me a second here. I gotta put my pants back on. Brother, <laughs> you like that? Oof, we need some fresh air, anyways. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's getting hot in there. What you're smelling? It's a powder coat. <laughs> <laughs> Yum. Okay. Majority of the evening, cutting all that down. Should I leave that door open for a minute? It might not hurt. All right, I'll leave it open because I think I'm done cutting for a while. Yeah. Dude, it looks way different, doesn't it? It does. It actually. It looks smaller. Yeah, but it looks better. It does look better without. I don't know. I'm I'm hit or miss on it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I think I like it without. You like it without? Yeah. I think with it lowered down to the ground, it looks should look, should look pretty good. Yeah. Originally, I was kind of disappointed. I think I thought I was gonna like it more, more with, with it. it but actually, See, that's how I felt when I had it on there, and then I took it off. I was like, man, I like it better with it. Okay. Now it's starting to grow on me. But if I do a ladder rack. I can do one that just comes up on each side yeah. and doesn't go past over to the top of the cab. So if I could make one smaller, have it only come up just a couple inches above the cab. Let's start welding up these upper supports. I'm just burping up that Costco hot dog still, so I'm just trying to stay away. Dude, burp that Costco hot dog up. I left my tank on all night. All night. Yeah, it's pretty fine. If you have good fittings, you still got gas, you're good. Oh, yeah, I have a thousand PSI stuff. It didn't leak at all. Nothing came out. Right, what not, does the billing pulse say? It's not. And it's here's not. your sign. Here's your sign. Nice and clean. That looks like a good spot to me. I'll show you what. That's a really pretty light. I can barely see it from here. Let me come around. Huh? I can barely see it from over there. Let me come around and, and get closer look at that. Yeah, can I get a good, it's a, good, it's a, good straight up view of it? Yeah, it's a pretty light. Hot diggity dog. There we go, there's one. And then what I'll do, is I'll take another piece, go up like that. Roll cage. Put a roll cage, for sure. It's gonna be a nine second. Qualification case for that. I'm looking for 850s. 850s. Okay. This one I'm going to go behind right here. It's got an 850 cert for the welder. <laughs> Ruby ain't going to have nothing on this. You see him bring that, that top fuel drag cert to, to the shop, though? Dude. Oh, I wish they would have dyno that. Would have been... He would have broke the dyno. Oh, he would have broke. Someone would have there broke was, the They were never going to let that happen. No. Pretty, pretty good enough. Pretty, pretty good. Now the issue is, is I want to make it so this thing is able to be taken out if I need it to. But I think I'll be able to lift it out of here and slide it out. Yeah. Oh, I'm just warping, it's pulling. Is it? Yeah, I watch it lean out. That's right. That's a cool, yeah, you get some flex in there to get the whole frame together before you finish all it off. Move it back. Boy, got a good attack on there. <laughs> I was waiting for that to snap. Here we go. When uh, Jeff Lutz ran a good to see him back out of retirement. Jeff Lutz ran a 619 on a streetcar. At 224, 236. He used to have the fastest streetcar. What, what, what car? What kind of chassis? Camaro. Oh, yeah, my God. Sa safety squints. Safety squints. Okay. Popping. There it is. Ooh, that was a good one. Sorry. That is what a garage floor is for. Knees shaking good, my man. How's that looking? Pretty straight? That looks pretty straight right there. You can keep it there. There you go. It doesn't 
does not want to go in that power code at all. Gosh, I wonder why. You got me? Nice number. You want the mini shakes? I'm all shook up. I'm all shook up. Cool, man. Let's do some uh, casters and we'll call it. Coolio. Now I can flip it upside down. It's got its own, uh, own little top there. Okay, let's figure out some casters, Nick. Casters. Casters, where's, where's my battery at? Oh, we're suffering here. We're at 26. All right, Nick, how should we do the casters here? You should go on the cart. I'm never inviting this guy over again. Okay, now what I could do is roll this like this. You could. But you say go right here. And then you can double, you're gonna double up the tubing on the front side that's geared. You gotta make this taller than the yeah. neck. Makes sense to me. Go double wide. I think that's probably the way to do it. What do you think? Yeah, that's it. Oh. Uh, clamp this baby right here. Give it, a, give it the clamps. You have some clamps over there. Where are they? Put some clamps over there on the ground. Yep, that's what I need. Right there. Oh. That's what I'm looking for right there, buddy. Okay. Hello. We go straight to the source. Yeah. We go straight to the source here. What Stranger Things season five gonna happen, man? When's what gonna happen? Stranger Things season five. Oh, I don't know. God. Nobody has a detention span. Problems now. Inside. Uh, I can always flip the bolt around, that's all I can do. Now let's go eight inches again. Do you know how much I sacrificed? You know how much I sacrificed? Who's so bad movie I don't know, what's that one from? Spider Man, that was Willem Dafoe. That guy's such a menacing look for him. Dude, it, for real. So is Jack Nicholson. I'll tell you what, this is bombing part is gonna be very, very heavy. Oh, no, it's working so well. Mm -hmm. Come on. That was it. How you do it? Good. Do a lot of stogie? We can do that. Dude, that's what's up, man. So it's the next day. Let's get the front casters welded on. But I wanted to address something. I know this thing looks horrible the way it is, but trust me, I'm gonna knock down off the paint off this or knock all the powder coat off it. And I'm gonna repaint it. This thing will look way, way better. These will not stick out as far. Like I was saying, I'm gonna end up cutting them down right here. Cause what's gonna happen is that welding tank will sit here. So we're not gonna have these wheelie bars on it anymore. But no, this thing will look way, way, way better than it is. Let's get the front casters at least tacked on there. So the way it sits now with the height of these casters and these casters with this spacer, it brings it up because we have it right here. I don't know if you can see it from that angle, but this caster sits higher than this one, which means this thing will sit nose up, which is the way I want it. So let's really quickly just throw a couple tacks on this just to hold it. What I wanna do is push this back just a little bit, not quite that far, because I might end up plating the front of it so you don't see the front holes right there. I will have to go to a store tomorrow, grab a couple hooks for the ground cable and the handle, such is life. So let's go ahead and get this thing tacked in there. Like I said, I'm not looking for perfect, just on there. I don't really think I need these on here. What I wanna do is make sure I got the flattest surface up front. So when I do plate it, you see I got maybe an eighth inch gap here, maybe a little more maybe 3 sixteenths. Keep that there. And I'll do this one right here. So hopefully it keeps it somewhat straight. So we'll just do a tack here. Uh, I don't want to tack there. We'll tack it right here, right back here and tack these two together. So where do I have my setting? I also adjusted my regulator because I guess when I was welding before, which is kind of a problem that I was running into, is I think my gas was too high and I checked it and I was running at 40 cubic feet an hour on my tank. So I adjusted the regulator down to 20 to 25. That's a good happy medium from between 20 and 25. That's really good for argon CO2 mix. 
Turn it down. If you see issues, turn it down. Let's go ahead and get this welded on. Now I don't want to tack the top of it right here, or technically the bottom of it, because that caster is, wants to sit flush on there. So if I tack here, then that caster could be cattywampus. And that's the last thing I want. Tell you what, this machine's running a lot better with that regulator turned down. Now what we could do is now weld the casters on. And all I'm gonna do is go in where the bolt holes are. That's it. I'm liking where that's at. Quick tack on that corner. Quick tack on that corner, that's it. Should be enough to hold it. Let's do the other side. Test it out. This thing should be like power steering on a Cadillac. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna weld this thing back on. I'm gonna throw washers on here and then place this on top of the washers. Retack everything together. All I did was just smack this with a mallet. This four pounder off camera. I just knocked it off, it came right off, so. So that made it super simple. So what I'll do is I'll put, a, put all this back together, tack this back on, then I'm gonna go ahead and put washers there and weld the caster onto that. Hopefully that should fix it. Might as well since we're underneath it, just throw a couple tacks on here just to keep it more stable. So I'm gonna go up to 12 gauge, Get a little bit more burn into it and make it just a little, just a little bit better, just slightly better. Might need my ground. I need to turn my gas back on. Heat is really good for bearings, by the way. I'll be coming around, I'm not going to come. Jump in the gap, jump in the gap. Yep, not anymore. Jump in the gap. Okay, should be a little bit more sturdy now. Oh yeah, that's way better. It's just, it's slight. And then when you put a little bit of weight on this corner, it stops. So my guess is with the counter on there, the welder on there, the tank on the back, it should be good to go. But So now, let's get the cabinet on there. And let's verify we're liking what we're seeing here. A lot of that is actually just a cabinet moving on there. We'll make sure those two are just about perfect, right? Do that now. Move this, tack it right there. Let's do that so this thing will be right where it needs to be. I'm not the first one to do this. If you go on YouTube, you can see a bunch of people have done this. I'm just doing it this way. Make sure I like it. I like that a lot better. This one's pretty solid. That one's good. Let's check the other side. What I can do is I can toss a washer on that side. 
There you go. This thing is super, super stable on there. Now, how tight do I want to make this thing? I don't really want it touching the cabinet, just kind of hugging it. Just a, just a, just a little smoochy on there. Beautiful. Now, I need to do a crossbar here. Crossbar on that side, and then one that goes across here. And this thing is about 80% done at that point. I've got the smaller square tubing. I wouldn't mind having that on the front. I might bring it down just a little bit, just to where we're about a quarter inch above here. A good way you can do that to make sure your gaps are good is get some washers, stack them on top of your cabinet, lower this bar on there. Now this is the smaller square tubing. This actually slips in here. Did I just come up with an idea? What if I had this that can actually slip down on there? And if I need to remove it, I can. That's not a bad idea, actually. I got plenty of square tubing to do that. I actually didn't even realize that. What I can do is just make two right angles and have it so this thing literally just drops right on there. We can cut these down almost flush to the top of the cabinet. And if I ever need to remove it, I can remove it, but it's still stable enough to keep everything together. I actually like that. So if I ever need to take this cabinet out and replace it, I've got room to do so. That's the plan we're going with. We're gonna do that. Well, while we got some time, we might as well start building it. First thing we need to do, let's measure the width of it. I think this is the right way to do it. Um, I don't know if I'm even gonna do it on the back. I might just make that one weld in solid, we'll see. If I remember, previous measurement, I think it was 17 and a half, 17 and three quarter. Doesn't have to be perfect. Now remember, these do move a little bit. I haven't fully welded them. Once I fully weld them, these things are gonna be pretty darn solid. Let's go 17 guys, let's just call it there because I can always pull it in just a little bit. And since I'm not too worried about this cabinet being stuck in there, now that I know we can do this, let's just do 17 and a half. We'll call it there. Here's a piece of the small stock. Slides right in there. Slides right in there. We'll make it 17. I think this one is sitting probably at 18 and a half. Now 19, so that one's 19. So we need to take an inch and a half off that. We want 17 and a half. What did I say, just a hair over 17 and a half? You guys gotta remember, cause I don't have the best memory. This is actually a fun project for me. Something not car related. I'm so used to doing car stuff. It's nice doing something a little off the beaten path as it were. Go 17 and a half. And let's go a little bit past it, right? Let's go maybe 17 and 9 sixteenths, 17 and 5 eighths. Okay, we'll ballpark it, right? It doesn't have to be spot on. Check the width. Oh, guys, that's, that's money. Let's go ahead and get a couple pieces, maybe about two inches long. I can slip right down in there. They don't need to be eight inches or 10 inches. We can make them two inches. Sometimes you can do a lot of damage with two inches. Now let's make it three inches. Is three enough or should I go four? I got the material, I can go four. We'll go four guys, we'll go four. Good enough for this guy. I'm not gonna get the grinder out. Start knocking paint off. Hopefully I can burn through it. Just to get a couple tacks on there, we'll see. Let's yeah, see if we can get a quick tack on here. Barehanded. Good in that one. This thing on now? You missed the first weld. We're on the second one now. It's all right, it's all right. Don't weld barehanded like I'm doing. I am overly complacent when it comes to that.
work it back and forth until they like each other, like that. Make sure it still works. Sure does like it, doesn't it? What we'll do tomorrow is we'll cut these down more flush and this could be something that we can remove. So I don't really want this video dragging on too much longer. I'm gonna start chopping away at it, kind of giving you just the set points of what I'm doing. I'm gonna do a speed through through the rest of it and then we'll show you the finished product. There was a big gap I had to fill. So you can see how big that gap was. So I kind of had to lay a bead. I don't know how well you can see it. I ended up having to kind of lay a bead in there to fill it. Just to give it some kind of strength. I know I'm not gonna cut these welds off, but even if I need to, all I need to do is go inside that groove, right? And just cut it. And look at the gap here. I mean, just barely. Fifteen and a half. So right on the inside of here are some tack welds. That's why I ground those down was so I can clear it. It's perfect. Look at that, perfect. Stepping on it. 250 pounds on each bar. That thing ain't going nowhere. Okay, last piece of bracing until I'm gonna call it. Right there, 25 inches. We're gonna do one right here. What I'm gonna eventually do on this side is I'm gonna have some square stock sitting here that I can rest a tray on because eventually I'm gonna get a plasma cutter and I wouldn't mind being able to have the ability to do that. So I'm gonna have square stock here, square stock here, come out. Like I said, a removable tray. It's gonna be kind of nice to do that in the future. Maybe we'll do that after when this is done. But either way, let's get one more bracing here. 25 inches is what I'm reading. 25 on the nose. And uh, we'll go ahead and after that, what we'll do is we'll grind it down, paint it, and finish her up.
tell you what, that was a lot of cutting and welding, but we got that project done. So I wanna give a big shout out to a good friend of mine, Josh Davis from back home. He sends a little gift in the mail. He's got a YouTube channel called No Turns Variety Hour. I'm gonna put the link down below to his YouTube channel. I want you guys, if you could, go to his channel, subscribe to him. He's trying to get his YouTube channel growing. He's been on for a little while. But Josh and I go way back, all the way back to high school, uh, freshman year. When I was a freshman, he was a senior. Me and him have got a bunch of crazy stories. The cool thing that Josh did was he has something pretty infamous amongst us as a group of friends back home in Illinois. Obviously, I'm out in Idaho now. I don't want anybody back home to get jealous when they see this, but Josh sent this to me. He's an honest, humble, good guy. Super, super funny, but he sent me this. His license plate from back home. Friends back home are gonna know exactly what that is. He had one of those early Ford probes from like the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> that thing was awesome. We did a bunch of crazy stuff in it, burnouts. We got pulled over by the police all the time with it. Uh, we got a bunch of stories with that car. So big shout out to Josh sending me that license plate, man. I do appreciate it. You're awesome. Thank you for that. And that's where it's gonna live, right there up against the wall. So Josh, you get to see it all the time. Last time I was tagged was 08, and there's a handful of stickers underneath it. But that also was on his Chevy Impala. He had one of those mid 2000s what is it 05 06 josh if you could comment down below on what year that ford probe was and what year that chevy impala was both cars are legends back home so thank you so much for sending out those things were burnout machines those things were awesome josh love you thank you for sending that i appreciate it so from now on you're going to see that plate in the background so let's get back into it real quick guys let me show you the finished product for that welding cart Hang on, let me turn on the light here. You know what I need to do? Oh, come on. Okay, let's turn it on. There it is, it's on. You know what I need to do? I need to install some lights under here. My in-laws got me some gift cards to Lowe's. What I need to do is just use that. That's the original shop lights are from Lowe's, these ones. Those $15 specials, that's where those things came from. So what I should do is get a couple more of those things. So anyways, guys, let me go ahead and show you what the wooden cart looks like as a final product. A couple things I did off camera because I don't want this video going on too long. So let me show you what it is. There it is right there. That's the final product. That's what it looks like with it all painted. I did end up having to put a block in front of the welder just to lift it up a little bit to clear the cord on here for when I open up the drawers. But this is way better than what I had originally sitting over here, kind of in the corner now of that one. This one is way more stout, way more buff. You can actually, steel toe Crocs. You can actually push this thing around. I'm not worried about this one getting scratched up, but the big one is, is way safer for this tank. This tank was way too big for that welding cart. And now this thing is so sturdy, that tank ain't going nowhere. But let me show you some things that I did off camera was I installed a couple of these bicycle hooks. I had these things laying around in the garage. So I tossed up one for the ground clamp tossed up another one for the actual handle as well and what i did was i took the chain so that original cart this one had two chains on it i put the other chain in a drawer so a friend of mine's gonna take this welding cart he can use it his welder is not as big as that one and his tank is not as big so that one should be way safer for him but what i did do is i took the chain one of the two welded it onto the cart and i wrapped it around right here and i installed this hook now this hook, as you can see, I just welded on right there real quick. That hook came off the square body right here is this hook. I took this one off and I took this one off. I think this one originally was used for the big jack that was in it. No longer have that, so I used one of those hooks. Easy enough, and I just kind of repurposed that. And that chain is on the last link, and I'm telling you guys, it is just enough to keep that tank on there. Meaning that I'm on the final link and it's tight. I mean, this tank ain't going nowhere. But that's a welding car, everyone. It wasn't a crazy project. This thing isn't anything special, but I just needed something better than what I had. Now I actually have drawers. Like right there. Got my welding helmet, got my gloves in there. And in the bottom, I don't really have much in there yet. There's my cord that adapts it from 220 down to 110 manual uh, little tank there but i want to fill it out with all of my other tools but that's it in a nutshell real fast what i do want to do in the future is get some square stock weld on a little bit right here i might have to redo the chain or even i can even go underneath it there there have a shelf 
because I wouldn't mind having a shelf that I can, like I said earlier, attach and detach because I wouldn't mind getting like a plasma cutter right there or something else, I'm not too sure. I could even do it on the other side. It's literally one or the same. But that's it guys. Thank you for watching this episode. I know it was dragged on. I hope you guys had fun. I had fun doing it. Something different than the truck. I'm gonna give you a little update on the truck right now. As I'm recording this video, tomorrow I gotta go over to the transmission shop. I'm gonna have them look at that 700 R4, verify a couple things on it. I'm gonna get a custom stall, probably ordered from them, but I'm gonna get a factory stall bought tomorrow for sure for it. And I got some goodies for the truck. I got the adapter flex plate for it, the spacers, the bolts. I even have the shifter linkage right there so I can hook up the column shift to the transmission. So I'm gathering parts for it. I'm slowly but surely gathering parts for it. Uh, what's left is I need to do the stall lockup for it, put that on a switch. I need to order a radiator for it. Oh, it's just a lot of odds and ends, water pump, stuff like that. I can get a water pump anywhere, um, O'Reilly, Rock Auto. AutoZone, but hopefully within the next couple weeks, we can get this thing pretty much almost wrapped up. I need to get a drive shaft made for it, but I'm gonna use the factory S10 one. I think I, think I can make that work. It was originally a two-piece drive shaft. I might try and do it into a single-piece drive shaft. I know people have done it. Usually when you lower your stuff down, that's when you kind of have issues. But for right now, just to get this thing running, I don't really need that S10 drive shaft anyway. So if I can make that one work for now, that's fine. I've taken a lot of stuff with solid rear axles and taken two piece drive shafts and knocked them down to one, especially being in a drift scene for so long for like 86 Corolla, stuff like that. I have used two piece drive shafts, converted them to a single piece drive shaft, never really had much issue with it. Anyways, if I can save a part, save a dollar now, I could spend a dollar later, that's what I'm gonna do. I need this truck running because I need to start working on this thing right here. It's been sitting long enough. I need to start getting a motor and transmission in it. Start building mounts for that. Now we've got a decent welding cart. We can do a little bit more stuff with it. Not that I couldn't do the same thing with that, but I trust this a lot more to wheel it around and it was kind of sketchy before. But anyways, thanks guys. I do appreciate it. Please subscribe. I know I said it earlier. I see some momentum on his channel. I want that momentum to grow. Link down below to my buddy Josh's channel, No Turns Variety Hour. Check out his channel. Thank you, Josh, for sending that license plate. All right, everyone. Catch you guys in the next one. Hopefully next week, if not, then the week after. And I'll see you guys then. Take care. Bye.